so I guess she needs to get away Good morning. Welcome to Mass. We are reminded today that God will raise up a prophet for us, that we are called to listen to and respond in obedience. The prophet is our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us how to live by his words, his life, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. We pray for one another today that if we hear his voice, we may not harden our hearts. Our gathering song this morning is number 548, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Please stand. <laughs> dead so it, if it goes dead during the context of the mass I'll make a quick switch. <laughs> uh, well welcome to mass today. Uh, it's, as you know the, the weather's kind of still decent but it's a lot colder than it was and it'll be that way for a, a day or two or we'll see what happens. Let us begin together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. We believe that God sent his Son prophet of prophets to come and reveal his word to us and he sends other people as well to reveal that word. Let us pray that we might be open to God's word of forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus you entered a world made dark by sin. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And you, Lord, you came especially to those who were rejected or poor or broken. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, we strive to hear your word that we might truly become your disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, God, oh, 
Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our, our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people saying, a prophet like me will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord, our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This is well said. I will raise up from them a prophet like you, from among their own kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, hard and not your heart. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in mental, as in the day of Masa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I'm telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the entire region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Before I uh, get started, folks, uh, as the day wears on, sometimes I get a little more, uh, maybe you could call it flippant. <laughs> anyway, last night we had the Hispanic Mass. And you may have noted, if you're listening, that the second reading has a kind of a different kind of theme that would probably take a little work to develop or to comprehend. But anyway, I, I mentioned last night, uh, and I was trying to talk in Spanish as best I could. It's always a challenge, you know. And I said, uh, 
I quoted a line from the second reading. I said, I'm going to adapt this a little bit. I'm going to do it in Spanish first, and then maybe you'll follow, maybe you won't, but I'll do it in English. El hombre soltero se preocupa, means worried, de las cosas del Señor uh, y de cómo agradecer, agradecerle y también de los perros. Now, nobody laughed. Nobody laughed. And I told him, I said, I, know nobody, I knew nobody would laugh. What I said was, the single man, call me, me, like me, is worried about the things of God and how to please him and also about his dogs. <laughs> nobody laughed. Nobody laughed last night. Anyway, but I had a little fun. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going I'm to do one of my announcements now, just for fun, too. Uh, you might be interested. Uh, I have kind of an interest in this because I've always kind of liked astronomy since I was a kid, and I did a fair amount of study in physics and stuff. But anyway, on Wednesday morning, Wednesday, January 31st, here, uh, between roughly the best time would probably be between 6 and 7 in the morning, there's going to be a number of events that occur. Unfortunately, right now the weather forecast isn't very promising. They're saying partly cloudy, which normally means you can't see anything. But anyway, if you're up between six and seven, and a lot of you would be, you know, if you work or go to school. I'm up a lot earlier than that, but uh, so I'm going to take a look. And if you can, the best view, if you get a view, would be with binoculars. Okay. So on Wednesday morning, there's going to be a super moon. Okay. Now, do you know what a supermoon is? That's, you know, the orbit of the moon is not a perfect circle. So every so often, don't ask me how often, the, it's closer to the Earth, as close as it can get. They call that a supermoon. It's only about 3% closer, but again, I'm not positive on my numbers here because I, I saw two different sets of numbers, but it would be this way. Uh, they say the moon would be about 14% brighter because it's closer, okay? So whatever, supermoon. The second thing is, it's also called, this is not an astronomical term, it's a colloquial term. It's also called a blue moon. Now, do you know what a blue moon is? Okay, a lot of you probably do. Uh, the expression is once in a blue moon, which means not very often, okay? A blue moon occurs on average every 29 months, okay? So it's not real often, uh, although I'll get to that in a minute. Anyway. So it'll be a blue moon because on the 31st, it'll be the second full moon in the month of January. Okay. But now the, the event, which might be visible, I, you know, say a prayer, but I might be visible, is there's going to be an eclipse of the moon, a lunar eclipse. Now where we are, it will be partial. I think, now again, I, saw, I looked at numbers and... One thing says this, one thing says that. Anyway, the eclipse here might be about 68%. Totality will be out further west. Hawaii will be total and the Pacific. The west coast will be better than here. Okay. So anyway, six to seven. Uh, now, okay, got to remember what church I'm in. The sun rises here. So where will the moon be at eclipse? There. Because the earth will between between the rays of the sun and the moon, so it's exactly opposite the sun. So at six, between six and seven, Wednesday morning, if you're so inclined, take a look at the horizon here, and if it's clear, you will see the moon partially eclipsed, and it should be kind of, uh, what happens, folks, is the, the sun's rays go through the atmosphere, so depending on how much dust and stuff is in the atmosphere determines the color and where you're located. So it could be kind of uh, orangey, maybe a little white. It could be reddish, a little white. If you're in totality, it turns, oftentimes it turns a kind of a deep, dark maroon or like, a, like an apple red, whatever it might be, okay? So anyway, <laughs> I had fun with this last night. I was walking out, I told the people in Chelsea at the end of Mass. So I was walking outside a church and I was about halfway down the aisle and this guy was, he tackled me, he said, Father, did you know that there's gonna be another blue moon in March. And see what happens, folks, is, uh, again, they're uncommon, but if there's one in January, then the 28 days of February just started over again, and then you have 31 days in March, so there'll be another blue moon in March. 
whatever, okay? Now, I couldn't let him leave me on the hook like that, so I had to ask him a question. And I did not know the answer to this question, but I found out this morning. If there's two full moons every once in a while in a month, what also might there be in a month? Now, this is how I think. I think kind of crazy. There can also be two new moons. You know what a new moon is, right? New moon is where you can't see anything. The moon is getting nothing. There was a little boy in Belle Plaine. Nice family. Little boy was sitting there. I don't know. He was about eight. I don't know. So I said, is, I said, does everyone know what a new moon is? And the, and the little boy said, oh, I know what it is. And he, I said, yeah, I figured he didn't know. I said, what is it? Well, he said, it's a new moon. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, folks, a new moon, when there's two new moons in one month, one will not occur until 2019, I checked. It's called a black moon. So every so often when there's two, two things, nothing to see, <laughs> It's called a black moon. Okay, enough of that stuff. Okay, I kind of like that stuff, so anyway. Uh, now, folks, what I want to talk about today, and I'll try to keep it moving here, is uh, in the, especially the first reading, I might touch on the gospel. And remember what uh, Moses said. Moses spoke to all the people. Now, now I, I'm going to talk about prophet. What is a prophet? Now, as you would ex expect, the prophet of prophets is our Lord Jesus Christ. He perfectly revealed by his words and his life the word of the Father to God's people. He's perfect. Next, I suppose, would be Peter and Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the apostles. In the Old Testament, you have Jeremiah, who's probably a martyr, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, who am I thinking of, Elijah, uh, Samuel, and others, many others. So, but, but Moses says, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. Okay? So Moses is saying something that's very true, folks, and that God, is, God raises up prophets of every persuasion, old, young, handsome, ugly, uh, impressive, disenchanting, whatever it might be. God will raise a prophet, and one of our tasks as a believers, as a believer, is to be open to the prophets that God might be sending us. Now, folks, prophets do two things. One is more important than the other, but they do two things. Some prophets are very good at inspiring, inspiration, calling us to be our best self. Now, most people, most people, when they hear a talk that's inspiring, they kind of like it. You know, it feels good, maybe I could do this. But the other job of the prophet, not always well liked, is to be more critical, cajoling, uh, correcting. And sometimes folks, when a prophet would do those things, they would risk their life. And we do believe, of course, that our Lord was the prophet of prophets who died on the cross. His predecessor, John the Baptist, spoke the truth about the wife of, uh, was it Herod's wife? Anyway, spoke the truth, and he got beheaded for, for that. All the apostles, with the exception of John, we believe, were martyrs, and many other believers, as you know, have been martyrs, okay? So anyway, positive and negative. I'll just mention this. Um, I was in the service. I was, in, uh, it was out in uh, Oregon, and we had this young man. He had just entered the Air Force. He got through basic training. He's red-haired. I'll just kind of be blunt here, honest. And again, got to be careful about judging. But he's red-haired. And uh, I don't think he was the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> He'd gone through high school to get in the service. And so he wasn't doing that well. And he was kind of looking for excuses to get out of the service. So I talked to the, the master sergeant, who was the head... Uh, whatever you call him, head of training or whatever his job was, uh, head of operation, whatever his job was. Uh, very, real good guy. He was a master sergeant. And we said, let's, let's try to save this guy. You know, let him serve his country in the Air Force, etc." So he chose, it was kind of his nature more than mine, he chose to be the corrector, the critiquer, the one that said, you better do this or you're going to get in trouble. 
I chose to be more the inspiration. So I tried to, and again, folks, now I'm just being honest, my background in astronomy and stuff, we were, our job was tracking satellites, so I kind of took to it better than some. So anyway, I tried to teach him and show him and get him to maybe be a little excited about it, because it actually was kind of fun, you know, sometimes, I mean. So anyway, uh, so he tried the correcting, I tried the inspiring. Were we successful? Nope, we failed. So even though we were trying to be prophets to him, either we failed or perhaps he wasn't called to be in the Air Force, I don't know. But I would, I would have hoped, folks, that he could have served for you know, four years, he would have gotten the GI Bill, could have possibly gone to college or community college, and I think perhaps learned some discipline, learned some uh, responsibility, maybe had a better life, I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, so anyway, sometimes prophets uh, rise up, they do what they believe God is inviting, calling them to do, Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they fail, okay? Now I want to just touch upon a few prophets in the Old Testament very quickly, just so you know that they come in all shapes and sizes, ages and all the rest. Uh, you remember uh, there was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob later was called Israel, had his 12 sons, and he had two sons by the wife he liked the most, <laughs> Joseph and Benjamin. And Joseph was older, Benjamin was a little kid. So anyway, Joseph heard the voice of God, and he would speak what God said to his brothers. Did his brothers like that? What did they want to do? They wanted to get rid of him, okay? So they were, they were all anxious to, to get rid of him. They were jealous of jo uh, Joseph because the uh, father seemed to prefer him because it was his favorite wife and he would always be <laughs> sharing God's word to him. Uh, and then uh, if you know the story, Reuben and I think another brother, they, they didn't want to kill their brother. So Reuben tried to play another card. He said, oh, let's not stop, kill him. Let's make some money off him. <laughs> so they, you know, they sold him to slavery in Egypt. And as you know, the prophet was their brother. And sometimes it's really hard to hear a word of prophecy from someone in our own immediate family, you know, like a brother or a sister. Anyway, so the prophet was their brother. And ironically, a generation or 20 years later, whatever it was, he became the right-hand man of the Pharaoh who listened to his voice, and he saved them from starvation and brought them to Egypt. And then, of course, Moses took them out again. And another prophet we heard two weeks ago, remember? Uh, we were listening uh, uh, to Samuel was in the temple, a little boy. His, remember, his mother had wanted a child, couldn't have one, and, and then she was in the temple. Anyway, the whole story is, he was in the temple as a little boy, and, and the head guy in the temple no longer heard the voice of God. And his two sons were no good. And so Samuel was in the temple and he heard God speak and he didn't know, he thought it was his master calling him. And then eventually the third time the, the master said, I wasn't the one talking. The Lord is speaking to him and answer him. So here folks, we have a little boy who could hear God and be a prophet and the, and, the, and the head guy in the temple, nothing. So what I, what I say to you folks, and I could give you more examples, is that the voice of the prophet can come in any way, shape, size, or form. You know, they can be your sibling, they can be your spouse, they can be your neighbor, they can be your father, your mother, your grandparent, they can be your child or even your grandchild. They can be someone at work, someone you like, someone you don't like. They could be someone in the parish, <laughs> someone you like, someone you don't like. But, you know, whenever we're critiqued, we have a, a natural instinct. Everybody does. I do too. We have a natural instinct to say, who are you to tell me what to do? And yet, folks, and yet, that person, this is why we need to pause in life and reflect and pray and discern, that person might be speaking God's word to us that can save us from who knows what and set us free to do something that God wants us to do. But we have to be open to hearing the voice of God. I was talking to someone not too long ago, and I don't know how we got talking about this, but uh, you know, I'm not married, of course. And he said, well, I'm a good marriage, and one day my, my wife said this to me. <laughs> correction, you know, correction. And I got really angry. You know, who is she to tell me what to do? 
But what he did rather, you know, rather than stay with that anger, which is natural, he, he brought it to his reflection and prayer, and he, it took him a day or two, and he eventually realized that his wife was right and he was wrong, and that his wife in that situation was being a prophet to him to make him a better person. I, I don't know what the context was, but he was able to listen to his wife and become a better whatever God was calling him to be. Okay? So, uh, and then in the gospel today, is there anything you want to say about that? Well, they respected Jesus. Again, Jesus was the Son of God because he taught with authority. And there were many who taught in those days, like the, like the scribes, oh, you can do this, you can do that, whatever you want to do, you know, I'm, you know. But Jesus didn't speak that way. But notice, now again, what was he doing there? Was it an evil spirit? Perhaps. You know, the, the chosen people believed that God was always good, so anything that was not good could not be of God, and they presumed it was an evil spirit. Now, maybe it was mental illness, maybe it was epilepsy, who knows? The point is, God could set that man free from whatever it was. It seemed to recognize, though, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So notice, though, folks, the one thing there is, now our Lord would correct, if necessary, if a person was full of themselves and pride and arrogance and condescending and stupid rules and that kind of thing. But notice here, he did not blame that man for his problem. All he did was set him free. Our instinct, human instinct, is if someone's having a problem, they must be doing something wrong. But Jesus was not there to condemn people unless they were full of arrogance and pride. Jesus was there to set them free. So whether you were uh, possibly, uh, what do they call it, possessed, whether you were a leper, uh, a prostitute, uh, a Gentile, poor, ugly, whatever. Jesus was not there to knock you down and say, well, you got this problem because of the, all the terrible things you've been doing. Jesus was there to set them free to become their best self, okay? Um, I was talking to someone, you remember the story, the, all these men were gathered near the temple and they wanted to stone this woman to death because she had been caught in adultery. And so, I mean, our Lord, you kind of wonder, you'd almost wish you could have seen it and seen what was going on. Because some of the men that wanted to stone her, were, let's just say they, they might have been customers, I don't know. But anyway, Jesus get, went down on the ground and started drawing with his fingers. So the big question people have is, what was he drawing with his fingers? I don't know. All I know, though, is Jesus said, ultimately, he rose up and he said, let the one among you without sin be the one to cast the first stone. And one by one, they all went and left. And then Jesus did not condemn the woman. He just said, from now on, avoid this sin. In other words, he set her free. Okay? That's the kind of, that's the kind of Lord we have. And folks, to, just to try to be open, it's not always easy to be open to the, the voices of the prophet that come to us in life, especially maybe when we don't want to hear it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God has sent his Son as the prophet of prophets, but he sends us many other voices that we might listen and find our way. We give our needs to God in that faith.
that religious sisters and brothers serve the church and the world with holiness of body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That civil leaders watch over the welfare of those whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That victims of violence and war experience the blessings of safety and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor and needy feel God's loving hand in their lives. Through the love of God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and those near death might know good care and feel God's loving concern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our young may be able to hear and answer the call of God to vocation and know a life of blessed service in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our faith community may answer God's call to serve the poor and strangers in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Sean Ziegler, that they may share in the risen life of our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you've given us the voice of your Son and the Spirit to keep us on the path to salvation. Help us always respond and listen to that voice. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jack and Carolyn Walker will be bringing the gifts to the altar. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 593, Your Words Are Spirit and Life.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar the offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son, and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim in song. special prayers of reconciliation. You therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give <clears throat> his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Share a sign of God's peace among us. Peace, partner. How are you doing? Take it easy. Don't work too hard. Peace be with you, too. Peace be with you, three. Thank you. 
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my throne. Our communion song is number 629, Blessed Are They.
Okay. Um, hmm. So as also I'll mention it here. Um, at the St. Joseph 150th celebration two weeks ago, Saturday night, they found an orthodontic retainer. So if you lost an orthodontic retainer at St. Joseph two weeks ago, uh, call the officer, stop by. There's a parish council meeting Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. St. Patrick's Parish Council meeting Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Next weekend there'll be a night's meal following Mass the Sunday Mass. <laughs> Here's another one. I saw this, uh, saw this in the office and I said, what is that? Now I kind of glanced at it. It looked, I thought it looked like a champagne bottle, but that's not what it was. Uh, over Christmas, someone left a small portable oxygen tank. And folks, kind of looks like a champagne bottle, but it's built a lot tougher. About that wide about that high with a little top that to me looked like the top of a champagne bottle but anyway, I don't even drink champagne but anyway uh, so they left a small portable oxygen tank over Christmas so if you know who that belongs to whatever would like to get it back to the owner okay and then there's a funeral tomorrow uh, we had three this week so tomorrow is uh, Richard Kvitera Monday 10:30 here visitation prior for an hour 11 o'clock Like I said, three funerals, thank you. <laughs> why did I forget that? Because I wrote it down, down wrong, that's why. <laughs> okay, the funeral is at 11 o'clock tomorrow and uh, visitation at 10, followed by burial, followed by a lunch, okay. Anything I forgot to announce? Yes, sir. Thomas, come on up. You got a good joke or anything? No, no, no. <laughs> Banjo means good morning in Haiti, or hello in Haiti, in, in, for the morning. But uh, basically I want to just say is thank you all very much for your prayers. I think it helped us a lot get through our trip going down. <laughs> I don't know if you most heard that it took us two days to get there. We got snowed in in Atlanta, and we stayed in Atlanta, then we went to Miami, from Miami we went to uh, Haiti, but on the way back we had everything pretty good. But I just want to thank you all for all your prayers. Yeah, at some point, um, some of those who went are going to uh, speak to us and share pictures before Mass or after Mass, however that goes. And then, of course, uh, Friday, <laughs> technically old school, uh, the nativity set would be left up until 40 days after Christmas. Feast of the Presentation, also called Candle Mass in this country, sometimes called Groundhog Day. Anyway, uh, we're going to leave the, uh, the nativity set up and through the funeral tomorrow, and then sometime this week we'll take it down. So it, it won't be around next weekend. So if anybody wants a picture riding the camel, you should do it today. <laughs> Let us pray in thanksgiving. <clears throat> Nourished by your saving gifts, O oh Lord, we pray that through this help to our salvation, true faith and hope may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you this beautiful crisp day. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our parting song is number 630. Oh. Lead me, Lord. <laughs> 